the cow on the roof written by eric madden and illustrated by paul hess Once upon a time there was a man called Shan and a woman called Shan they lived in a little cottage on a hill the roof of the cottage was covered with grass green growing grass every day shan went out to the field sometimes he plowed the soil sometimes he sowed the seeds sometimes he weeded the turnip and sometimes he cut the hay there was a plenty to do and he was always tired when he got home but shan who stay at home and worked around the farmyard always seem as fresh as buttercup after a while shan started to feel that he was the one doing all the hard work and he began to grumble he began to complain he began to moan at last shan could bear it no longer so she said oh white shan if that's the way you feel tomorrow i will go out and do your work and you can stay at home and do mine great said shan tomorrow i will have a rest i will have a holiday i will have a day off the next day Shan went off with the skit over her shoulder and Shan stoked the fire put his feet up and lit his pipe aha this is the life he thought and he sat for 2 hours doing absolutely nothing but suddenly Shan realized he had to make butter to go with his dinner time porridge he knew how to make it though he had never actually done it himself so he got the churn poured in the cream and began turning and churning turning and churning after a while he looked inside just cream sloshing about so he turned the handle faster still turning and churning turning and churning again he looked inside still no butter by now shon was hot and tired for third time he turned faster than ever turning and churning turning and churning but once again still no butter now shon was really thirsty i know i will go to the cellar and pour a drink of ale He went down the steps into the cellar. There at the bottom stood a keg of fine homemade brown ale. He turned the tap and began pouring the ale into a mug. Oh, it looked good. It had a dark color, a frothy head and a smell that made his mouth water. He could hardly wait. But suddenly there was a loud bang. and squeal and a clatter from upstairs oh no cried shon and he dropped the mug and ran quickly back into the kitchen he had left the kitchen door open and there was the pig it had knocked over the churn spill cream all over the floor and was greedily lapping it up shon was furious he butted the pig out of the kitchen then look at the mess oh well he said he said shrugging his shoulders gone is gone then shon remember he had left the l running from the cake downstairs he raced back down the steps but it was too late every last drop of l was sloshing about on the cellar floor Oh no this was terrible far worse than spilling the cream but there was nothing he could do about it so he shrugged his shoulders once more and said 
Oh well, gone is gone. Sean went back into the kitchen. There was no more cream, but at least he could still make the porridge. But first, he had to roll the oats. So he took a tray, filled it with oats, found a special rolling pin with grooves in it and began to roll the oats. Then outside in the barn, the cow began to moo. Oh dear, said Sean, I'll have to take the cow to the field. He left the oats, went to the barn and put a rope around the cow's neck. He was just thinking about the porridge and how far it was to the field when he noticed growing on the cottage roof fresh, juicy grass. I know, he thought. I'll put the cow on the roof. So Sean led the cow to the hill behind the cottage and put a plank to the roof. At first, she wouldn't go up, but at last he coaxed her with a handful of sweet grass. Then he took the rope's end and dropped it down the chimney. I will tie that off when I get down, just to be sure she is safe. Sean left the cow munching away on the roof and went back to the kitchen. Oh no! He had left the door open and this time the hens had come in. They had found the oats, scratched and scattered them over the floor. And they had left chicken droppings mixed in with the cream. Ah, uh, what a mess! Sean shooed the chickens out and then said to himself, Oh well, gone is gone. But he still had some oats to be put them with water into a pot. He was stoking the fire when he noticed the dangling rope. He grabbed the end and tied it around, tied it round his ankle, thinking, Now I'll know what the cow's doing on the roof. And then he began to stir the porridge. The porridge was just starting to thicken when the cow fell off the roof. Sean was yanked by his ankle up the chimney where he stuck upside down. Outside the poor cow was hanging by her neck, her feet just touching the ground, crying Mua! Mua! Meanwhile, out in the fields, Sean had been working hard all day. She looked up at the sun and realized it was past her dinner time. So she began walking back to the cottage. When she came in sight of the house, there was a cow hanging off the roof. So she ran up to it, pulled the axe out of the chopping block and chopped the rope. Inside, Sean fell head first down the chimney and into the pot of porridge. When Sean opened the door, there was Sean with suit up to his armpits and porridge over his head. What a mess! Sean looked at the cream and the oats and the chicken and the pig droppings. She sniffed the ale wafting from the sailor. Then she smiled and said, Oh well, gone is gone. But from now on, you stick to your work, I will stick to mine. And we'll say no more about it. I'm sorry, my dear, I was wrong, said Sean. Your work is just as hard as mine. The next day, Sean strode off to the fields and never once complained again.